back again and I am not here to show you how pretty screens can be in fact in my opinion the prettier the screen the more dangerous it is because people assume because it's so pretty there obviously was a lot of time and energy that went into it in this day and age where things can be drag and drop and create on the fly there's more of a risk that people assume because it's nice looking that people put the time in and you really could be looking at really bad data. The goal in this market should be actionable intelligence. Well, it's not, it's not intelligent to take action on data you don't trust. One of the things that I think differentiates the, the process that I recommend with Click is that of governed metrics. We've talked before that I can have these measures and instead of building formulas for each object, I instead create measures that have the coding in them. You'll see with each of these, there's code and there's this little tag that says master item and it's got these little numbers. That's because these were not created inside the app. This application is subscribing to a governed metric service saying, please, Share with me any clinical measures that have been built. One of the things I'm going to show you is how I do that in a minute, but I also wanted to show you we don't have a dimension here called AAA condition. I'm going to create that on the fly, and I want to show you that that gets built um, on the fly as part of that. So the way that we do this, we have just a simple spreadsheet. And in the spreadsheet, we can say, hey, here's the subject area because applications can subscribe to one subject, two subjects, 10 subjects, every subject doesn't really matter. But in the world world, I might have 16,000 metrics or dimensions. I want to cross my, my application library of hundreds of apps potentially. I, I only want to subscribe to the set that's important to that application. Um, I, I don't want to clutter up a list of expressions for 18,000 things that I don't need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new one that's going to be in that clinical library. This one, though, is going to be a dimension. And it is going to be, like I say, we're going to call this AAA condition. And what we're going to do here is we're going to give it a description. This is how we calculate the patient's condition, and I might put a website out there that says, hey, go here. And on that website, I give 18 pages of details as to what conditions about the patient, how we calculate it. They had these ICD codes as part of a primary condition. They did not have these as a secondary condition. That metadata could be anything you want so that the person looking at it would know they can trust it. And I'm going to walk through and let you see how an end user would see this in a minute. All I would have to do for a dimension is give it the field name if it's a single field dimension, or I could give it multiple fields if I want to drill down. In this case, we're just doing a single one. I'm going to say the owner of this is my clinical um, subscription list. I can say this has to do with a patient. This has to do with conditions and possibly I give it other tags like ICD. All I'm going to do is save this spreadsheet now. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to go ahead and close this application. I'm going to come back to this. This is the hub of it all. It's our govern metric service. So it's simply a service that's out there running. I can first test and ensure that it's been configured to be talking to my server. Um, it is. I could individually say, hey, I just want to update the metrics um, because I can have an app that would look at them to make sure that nobody's doing anything goofy. I can update those in applications or I can do what I'm going to do now. I want to reload the library from my spreadsheet, my database. However, I've built those out in the real world. I'm just doing it as an example so I can hand type quickly and move on. I'm going to reload those things. First thing it's going to do is reload these um, into an application, bring that data in. Now it's going to update that master library of these dimensions and measures that are out there. 
And then the next step it's going to take is it's going to try to update the applications. If I've got a couple apps, like I do on my little example system here, the process is pretty quick like that. If I had 18,000 governed metrics, which we probably have that many business rules and formulas in a company, um, it may take a little bit longer than that. Um, so now I'm done. That, that's the process. I've changed my governed set of metrics, and end user didn't do that. The code team did it. Um, and now that code team can walk away. Their job is to code stuff. I don't need those guys who can do those crazy formulas like that, um, dealing with this kind of stuff, and then also having to say, okay, oh, you need that. That should be a different shade of blue. Okay, oh, oh, you want that two pixels over. Okay, let's do that. You want coders to code, data people to grab data, and you want designers and business analysts and subject matter experts to simply do what it is they do best. And so now I'm going to come out here. I'm going to reopen this application, and I should be able to trust that my governed metrics are now part of this application because it's subscribed to that service. And so I can come out here. One of the things I didn't show you before was I can create sheets that are pretty, but I can also have a how to, hey, before you get started with your app, understand your data, create a tab that says anything. Mine simply says metric definitions. But this is simply a way to show the end user, hey, Bob, here's what's in this app if this is not the definition you're expecting stop what you're doing i don't care how pretty the screen is stop what you're doing this is what is in this application if you needed something different than these definitions hey here's my condition that i'm looking at go to that website link if that's not how your department calculates revenue or profit or costs or blah 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 anything doesn't matter then stop what you're doing i'm going to go in and take a look at these master items now what i should hopefully see is this aaa condition now as a dimension that's out here hey guess what that's what we entered into the spreadsheet so as i govern and change these things this stuff is rolling across applications. If I subscribe to this from 10 clinical applications, I've just made the right move in 10 applications. But as I showed you, you could bring these things in and each application could individually load to grab them if you wanted to and wait, however you want to do that. But the idea is you do not need to come in here by hand and create this. Once I've got this done, let me go ahead. I'm going to try to create a brand new sheet because I want to work with this new field that I didn't have before. And I could just drag and drop it as a list box or I could, because remember, I'm just a subject matter expert. I'm not a coder. I'm a subject matter expert. I'm now going to use this brand new dimension that was published, and I'm going to use one of these crazy formulas that was out there that I would have no idea how to create by hand. And now I've kind of got the best of both worlds. I've got governed self-service for people who understand the subjects they're working with, but they do not have to be coders. Meanwhile, some coder somewhere build out definitions that I now just put into my application without having to bother them or get on their list. The data is in there is trusted because it's coming from a single source of truth. The formulas, the dimensions, and the measures are trusted. It's a single source of the truth. And you know what I call that? Govern self-service for actionable intelligence. Have a great day.